Calculation of cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. The calculation of cost of goods sold is much more complex for a manufacturing firm than it would be for a merchandising firm. Here we have some information. We have the beginning and ending balances for raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. And we have some additional information. We have the raw materials that were purchased during the period, the indirect materials that were requisitioned for use in the work in process or on the factory floor out of raw materials, out of the raw material warehouse. We have the direct labor that was used in production. We have the amount of overhead that was applied to the job order cost sheet. And then we also have the amount of underapplied overhead. We are also going to compare this calculation of the cost of goods sold to the job order cost sheet. What we're going to be doing is first calculating the direct materials used in production. Direct materials, the calculation, requires the use of everything in raw materials because what went through raw materials is going to be equivalent to what is used in as the direct materials used in production that are used in WIP. Then we are going to use all the various components that were in WIP including beginning and ending work in process inventory in order to calculate cost of goods manufactured. After we've calculated cost of goods manufactured then we are going to be using finished goods in order to calculate cost of goods sold. We will see that cost of goods manufactured essentially equates to purchases by a merchandising company. However, since we're not purchasing inventory but manufacturing it, cost of goods, so, um, goods manufactured will equate to purchases. First, in calculating the direct materials used in production, we are going to add beginning raw materials. Then to that we are going to add raw materials purchased during the period and this will give us raw materials available for production. To find what we used in production we are going to subtract ending raw materials because that will tell us what was used in production. However, we have to also subtract the indirect materials that were requisitioned since we are purely trying to calculate the direct materials used in production. So these would have been taken out of the uh, raw materials that were used in production and we need to take it out of the calculation in order to isolate direct materials used in production. We can see that that calculation is $50,000 and we can also see from the job order cost sheet that the direct materials used in production from the previous example that we used when we looked at job order costing was $50,000. Next let's look at calculating cost of goods manufactured. So cost of goods manufactured includes those items which were in WIP. So we looked at the direct materials that were used in production. Now we're going to look at the direct labor that was used in production. Remember these are all additions to WIP during the period. And that agrees to the direct labor on the job order cost sheet. We're going to look at the amount of applied overhead that was applied to work in process which we'll also find on the job order cost sheet. And this will give us some total manufacturing costs that were added during the period. However, we can see that where there was a beginning balance and work in process. That beginning balance was $30,000 and it also agrees to the beginning balance on the job order cost sheet. $30,000. Now we can see that the WIP available during the month equals the job order cost sheet. However, some jobs will have moved out of WIP into finished goods and in this instance the prior example that we used we said that all of job A was completed and moved into finished goods. So therefore we want to subtract ending work in process. So when job A was finished the only thing remaining was the 72000 associated with job B and that was also the ending balance and work in process. And we can see that what was moved out of work in process into finished goods also equals as far as a journal entry also would equal 
cost of goods manufactured. We can also see that by having this information here, we can also calculate cost of goods manufactured. And we said that equates to purchases when you're looking at calculations of cost of goods sold. We have what we essentially quote unquote purchased during the period. So now we have beginning finished goods. This is going to equal to goods available for sale. So these were all the goods that were available for sale during the period. Now, sorry, back up. Uh, now we want to look at the ending finished goods inventory because this will tell us if we are able to count the ending finished goods inventory then the amount that is left over after we subtract it from the cost that goods that were available for sale means that these were the uh, items that were sold and we're going to call them unadjusted cost of goods sold because we have to take into consideration any over or under applied overhead. So unadjusted cost of goods sold would be $118,500. Now to this, we have to take into consideration any over or under applied overhead. In this instance, we had under applied overhead. So when we have under applied overhead, we will add that to unadjusted cost of goods sold, and that will give us our adjusted cost of goods sold. If we had had over applied overhead, we would be subtracting instead of adding, 